Now when it comes time to working with centered core drills, there are a couple of different parts to look into. One of course is your centered core drill. You'll notice it is a screw mounted assembly. This is called a Belgian mount or a half inch gas thread. This will fit into our drill head assembly or water feed assembly. You'll notice it is also a screw mount. The centered core drill screws directly into this part. You'll notice there's notches on the drill head assembly and notches on the core drill itself. That's gonna allow you to actually remove the core drill after you're done. You generally only need to finger tighten the core drill on there initially, but as it drills, it will tighten up. So you will need some wrenches to remove these later. The drill head assembly itself has a water feed on this side. You've got a right angle push to connect socket here that can twist and swivel to allow for different connections. And you also have a valve on the top here that controls the water flow through the drill head assembly and out through the core drill. Now to get water into the drill head assembly, we'll need a submersible pump. Now this is a pump that we carry. It has a nice push to connect adapter on the top of the pump. So it utilizes very simple quarter inch polyethylene tubing that you can acquire at any home store or from us directly. Now our submersible pump here is gonna go into a bucket underneath our table that we have full of water. This tubing will come back up through our table and connect to our drill head assembly in our drill press. And I'll show you how that works. Now our water bucket is gonna go on our shelf underneath. And our submersible pump will go down into the water bucket. On our drill press, we actually have this little drain pan that we have from Covington. It has a little bit of AstroTurf carpeting in here to give the glass something to rest against. We've put some magnet on the bottom side of this pan and we've connected a drain line to it. So this fits nicely onto our drill presses. Now our drain line here is actually gonna go down into our water bucket. So as we're drilling, the water will go back down into our bucket and recycle up to our drill head assembly. So our drill head assembly here will chuck directly into our drill press. Now drill presses come most often with a Jacobs chuck. They have little teeth here that as you spin this will come down and grab onto pieces that are in here. Usually it's just a typical drill. Now drill presses are not terribly tolerant, which means they have a lot of give and take on how they hold onto a piece. When you chuck in your drill head assembly to the drill press, with these Jacobs chucks, they're often not very tight on their tolerance. So oftentimes when you turn this on, you're gonna have a lot of wiggle and shake in your drill head assembly here. You may have to chuck and rechuck this drill head assembly until you get it straight. An easy way to test that is to put a core drill in it, but the first thing I'm gonna do is hook up our water. Now once your drill head assembly is chucked into your drill press, you'll have your water tube from your submersible pump, and you'll wanna cut this off so it gets pretty tight on your drill press. You don't want a whole lot of play in this because when you turn on your drill press, your assembly here is gonna spin. If there's a lot of play in your water line, it's just gonna spin your water line up against your drill head assembly. So you wanna make this pretty tight. With the push to connect adapter, you just push the tubing right in. Now I'm gonna turn this on and see how tight this is. That's pretty good because my housing assembly is not moving but my drill head assembly is. So we're good there. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put one of my core drills in. Again, this screws directly into the drill head assembly. You generally don't need to tighten this with the wrenches. Finger tight is good. So we're gonna turn on our drill press. I'm gonna take a look at my core drill to see how straight it's running. That's got a little bit of wobble to it. I'm not real happy with that. So I'm gonna try and reseat my drill head assembly a little bit. So I'm gonna loosen my drill press, the Jacobs truck on my drill press, and kind of reseat my drill head assembly a little bit. And you may have to do this multiple times to get this to seat correctly. Again, I'm a little off. So it's not unusual to have to do this multiple times. Drill presses, like I said, are not terribly good on their tolerances. So moving it around several times may be the best option you have right now to try and get this centered nicely. 
Yeah, that's pretty good. Now in my piece of glass here, I've got my scrap glass on top. I'm gonna to do a couple of different things with my core drills. I'm gonna do some designs in this glass instead of actually cutting all the way through it. So I'm gonna take and plan out what I'm gonna do with my core drills here. So I'm gonna start with this half inch core drill. So I'm gonna kind of mark off where I want this drill to go. Now that I have my drill head assembly chucked into my drill press and it's running relatively true, I'm gonna check my drill depth now. So to do that, I'm gonna lower down my drill press. My glass here. And I'm gonna move my table, raise it up to the depth that I want to end up with with my core drill. That's about as deep into the glass as I want to go for this particular project. So now I'm going to lock my table. Raise my core drill back up. And that's my depth. Now that my submersible pump is plugged in, if I turn on the valve on my drill head assembly, you'll see I've got a nice water flow coming out of the drill head. This is going to keep all the ground glass flushed out of my hole as I'm drilling with my core drill. I'm gonna line up with my previously selected area. Now I can turn on my drill press. My core drill's moving nicely, but my drill head assembly housing is staying in place. Now with core drilling, you wanna try and make sure you do an up and down motion. It's not like drilling through wood. You do wanna take your time and allow the ground glass to be flushed out as you're grinding through. As with anything else cold working, take your time, be patient, and it will reward you. Now I can feel I've already gone through my sacrificial glass that I've waxed to my piece. I've reached my desired depth. Now I'll bring my core drill back out. And you can see here, my core drill got plugged up by my sacrificial piece of glass, so there's no water flowing through it. You really need to be careful with this. So you can see it dried out very, very quickly. And I now have a layer of glass all over the outside of my core drill. If I continued drilling in this, it would have stripped the entire tip of my core drill off and probably cracked my glass too. So I'm gonna turn off my water feed to my core drill. I'm gonna take my core drill out and I'm gonna have to remove this piece. This is another reason why it's very, very important to take your time while drilling through the glass. Situations like that can occur very, very quickly where your core drill can dry out and it can turn bad very, very quickly. All you need is something that's a little bit longer than the core drill itself to feed into it. And generally, those cores will pop right out. Now, since my core drill did overheat and I've got some glass that's built up on the core drill itself, I'm going to mount this back into my drill head assembly. I'm going to dress the drill. Now this is a block of our aluminum oxide dressing stick. Now when your core drill starts to wear out or you've done something like I've done where I've glazed some glass on the tip of this, you'll want to dress the core drill. I'm going to turn on my water flow again. Turn on my drill press. I'm just going to make a drill into the dressing stick. Now you'll see with one quick drill into the dressing stick, I have nice diamond coverage on my core drill again. This has basically stripped off a layer of the metal and exposed the next layer of diamonds in the centered core drill. Now you can do this with a centered core drill like this. You cannot do this with an electroplated core drill. The tip of a centered core drill has diamond all the way through the tip of the drill. So as you wear down the diamonds, you can drill into a dressing stick 
it will expose the next layer of diamonds and it's like a brand new drill again. Or if you've done like I have done and you've glazed the outside of the drill with glass, simply drill once into a dressing stick, it will strip off that core drill, expose brand new diamonds, and you're good to go.